himself deep within Miami's underground hip hop scene. Within a year, he was one of the first graffiti writers in South Florida. By 1986, he had established himself as a leader of the Miami graffiti movement. He founded TWB, Together We Bomb, MOB, Masters of Bombing, and co-founded Alive Five Crew. He initiated Miami's original Wall of Fame as, and was one of three Miami teenagers selected for a graffiti exhibition, exhibition at the West Dade Region Public County Library. He continues to paint his message, loveism, all over the city streets. Party people in the place to be, please welcome Heck One Love, y'all. What up, what up, what up? What's going on? Good to have you here, man. How are you, Brother Brim? I am well, my brother. How are you? It's always a blessing to see you. You too, man. I know you were out there in the hot sun painting. You got a lot of heat to share with us. So let's jump right in, man. Where yeah, are you right you know, now? So right there, we're looking at my uh, birthplace, you know, my uh, birth home, which is in Havana, Cuba. The first floor there on the right is uh, my, my first home. So I figured it would be good to start there and just let people know, um, you know, you can have humble beginnings and, and also big dreams. Amen. Amen. So you moved from... Cuba to Miami in what year? 82. Okay. And what was what was Miami like at the time when you came here? Well, for me, it was a total discovery, you know, mind blown. Uh, it was, you know, the 80s. It was a lot of cocaine, a lot of all that stuff going on. You know, the 80s stuff, you know, big cars, big hair. And I was just loving everything. And just to me, America was just like this crazy uh, fantasy land. Um, right here, we're looking at the very first if it's not the very first thing I did on the wall, it's one of the first things, definitely the first documented thing that I know that I have, which is uh, at the public library, we did this, this quick little get up and the four is for forecast, which is what I used to write back in the day. So you see right over the four, there's a cast. Mm -hmm. And then there's a uh, Mar and says the C and the M. And so which public library was this at? This is a West Day Regional Library in Coral Way. Nice. Westchester, yeah. So when you were first coming up, who, who was up in Westchester at that time? Man, ATA, I mean, at the very beginning, it was uh, not that many people. Uh, it was uh, just old crews, you know, um, ATA, ATKM. Um, you know, it's hard to remember, man. A lot of stuff has really gone from my mind from the very, very early years, you know, um, I was also, you know, I wasn't as knowledgeable right away about everything. I was just starting out myself, you know, so it took mm -hmm. me a while to really get a, uh, a lay of the land of what was happening in the city. And Over so here, we're looking at the original Pennant. Uh, you know, all the spots in Miami called Pennants because of this spot, which was a penitentiary. And here we have a TWB, uh, and I wanted to show sort of like the space because this was like one of the main rooms. But, uh, you know, this piece was pretty destroyed right away. It was like a Western scene inside like these Western type of letters. This is when I first started doing, I think that's my first piece of the pennant. I was trying to try different letters, just trying. I was really enamored of fonts, and I guess I still am. But um, I just tried different fonts. You know, I would like look through magazines and, and, and newspapers and just be fascinated with like letters and say, well, you know, maybe I could do a piece with those letters. And so what year was this? 84. And, I mean, and I don't know. I don't know for a fact, but mm -hmm. I'm guessing. And, and what was it like going to a pennant for the first time? Who told you about the pennant? And where was uh, this you know, to... my friends at the time, 84, 85 ish, this could have been 85, um, were Senec and Sar. And, um, and uh, yeah, you know, um, Alive Five, that was a little bit later, but I, I was hanging out with them since like the mid 80s, you know. When I started going to Rockway Middle, I hung up, I, I, I started hanging out with them and, and like, you know, we, we sort of had a, this rivalry thing at first and then we eventually, you know, started hanging out. This is Rock in the City. And uh, well, that was my first piece at the Wall of Fame, uh, which was what started the Wall of Fame, which was not a Wall of Fame. It was not planned to be a Wall of Fame. It was sort of like the accidental Wall of Fame. It was supposed to be my wall, and then eventually it became kind of like the mob crew wall, and then eventually it just became like everybody's wall. You know, it just kind of became a heat up there. What What was the location of that wall? That was on Coral Way as well, and like by 97th, you know, it's a big shopping center that's there now, but before that it was being, being built, and it was, 
it was like behind some houses and there was like a field in front between coral ways. So it was like pretty private. At the same time, it was this long, massive wall in front of a development, you know? Right. And I'm, so, you know, these pictures, because they're so old, it's really hard to kind of see the colors on them. But if I zoom in, you can get a pretty good idea of it. So who worked yeah. on this piece well, with you, Rock in the City? That was me by myself. I, I honestly was doing this stuff like, I didn't even know if I could do it or not at this point. This is some of my earliest pieces. And so I was not really sure um, who to show it to. And you can see like around the edges, what I'm really seeing now is my lack of paint and my lack of cans. Mm -hmm. I would do the bare minimum border, like a tiny, almost like you see that. But you see that weird shape in the middle of those two pieces, that yellow thing? Yep. Okay, so what is that? You know what that is? That's me going over something there that was like this very dark thing with just a little bit of yellow, just to create some kind of unity in the two pieces, because I only had like such little paint. That's why you see some spots of the piece are not painted because I either ran out of paint or I was planning to come back when I had some paint. You have to understand, I was painting this piece like two or three cans at a time. And so were you, know? you doing this in the middle of the night? Was it a day? No, no, I was doing it like in the afternoon, uh, you know, like in the middle of the day, I was like behind houses and like away from the high, I mean, it was far away from Coral Way. There was like fields and stuff in between grass mm -hmm. and it wasn't as visible. Now it's all developed, you know, it's very different now. Right. I don't even remember exactly what it is, to be honest with you. But I know it was a very early piece. And so for those of you that just are just joining us right now, we are rocking live with Heck One Love, original Miami graffiti pioneer. You are live on Art Talk, Museum of Graffiti represent. If you can please show your support so we can continue to tell these stories. Please purchase a badge. And if you're police, purchase a badge as well, because that's what y'all do. Anyway, we, we are rocking with the original pioneers. So let's get it. Heck one love. All right, let's go to the next. All right, we're getting to some. So I guess this is uh, one of the earliest things by the mob crew, which is at the beginning, the mob crew was just me and my homies that were not even so much writers as much as me trying to get them to be writers, trying to get a crew together. Uh, very early years. This was almost like a quick, I didn't, you know, like a quick little get up. No outline, obviously, just, you know, I just kind of improvised it. And I still like that beat quite a bit. So what does mob, for the sake of the, you know, our, our listeners, what does mob crew stand for? And who Masters of Bombing. Mob? Masters of Bombing. Back in the day, before that, it was TWB together with Bomb. Mm -hmm. And we really were bombers back in TWB. You know, we were like serious, serious wreckage. But after that, I wanted to get more into like a, a piecing crew. And even though um, it says Masters of Bombing, it was supposed to be a piecing crew. Don't ask me the logic in that. But I just like using the word mob. And who was down with the crew? Well, it was... Um... Man, right now I'm... I'm. It's all good. It'll come to you. It'll come to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So this king piece. Tell us about this king piece. We see the A2A tags up top. VO5, what do you know about those crews there? Well, Sinister VO5, tank. you see how VO5 went, uh, there was an Alive 5 thing there. Right. See up there, like up there on the green is like an A5, and then uh, he wrote VO5 over it. You see there? That was yeah. scene. You see how he write a scene? Yep. Yeah. Back then we have beef. He didn't like the fact that we were VO5 and they were, uh, I mean, that they were, that they were VO5 and we were a live five. He was like, no, you can't have a five. <laughs> and so the beef begins. Yeah, it's funny. And, and so tell us about this King piece. Well, it's funny because I was trying to do this piece to try to like impress ATA. Back in the day, I just had no, like, I didn't think like, why don't I just ask him to go in? I just said like, I'm going to do this piece and I'm going to say like, you know, um, kings just like trying to get in it mm -hmm. meanwhile nobody got it but what's really happened what's funny is that it got toyed right away because people thought it was like latin kings oh. and it was like a disciple area so the disciples destroyed the peace you know? and it wasn't even about that at all it was just completely misunderstood it wasn't one of my crazy ideas got it got it also look mar he was in uh he was in mob okay that's my friend George. 
And I mean, these fill-ins are so classic. I, I grew up looking at photos of fill-ins like this, and this is how we learned to paint was by studying these pictures. But how did you learn to paint? Who took you under your wing and taught you, or what? I mean, I guess I, I learned from, uh, I guess the stuff in New York as much as everyone, you know. Um, I don't know if this was, I, I'm sure at this point I was already at least seeing uh, Star Wars, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I had seen Star Wars and probably even Subway Art by then. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there was a lot of that in the mind, you know, even if you're not trying to buy, there's a, that influence. You know, I didn't just come up with those bits and bubbles on my own. Right, right. You and big up, big up Low Tech for purchasing their first badge. We appreciate you, man. Thank you, Low Tech. <laughs> so so anyway, I wanted to show you that picture, what happened to it. That's the after, you know, like the, you see how that, that picture before was all nice. And this is a, what happened afterwards. Like you see, they, that's the same piece, but I just had to fill it in in silver because they had toyed it and I just tried to fix it a little bit. Got it, got you it. See? So back then it was like nothing would, you know, like a lot of pieces would eventually just get toyed. Mm. And pretty much all the pieces got toyed eventually. It wasn't like now. There's a nice shot of the piece there. Yeah. Leftover paint. What, what neighborhood is this in? This is Westchester. So it's, this is so you, off Coral Way. Yeah, you know, I used to live by uh, Coral Way in 97th, and a lot of my early pieces I read by there. I used to just walk or be on a bike, you know. This was mm -hmm. way before uh, transportation. And, I mean, style, you, your style really starts to develop here with the connection yeah. of the bits and the pieces and the fades and blends. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry the pictures are so old. It's okay. It but, uh, yeah. <laughs> This was the first piece that I did that I was like, oh, I'm pretty good. I think I know what I'm doing here a little bit. You Very, know? yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, this is when I first, like, when I first did a piece that I was, like, proud of, that I thought, okay, this is pretty good, I think. At least outline. To me, it was all about the outline back then, you know? Yes. The fills was always, like, an afterthought in, in a way. Very advanced, though. I mean, for, for the time, it was very advanced for Miami writing. Thank you. Yeah, man. Well, you know, I went to New York City in like 84, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to New Jersey and I stayed with my parents, uh, my dad's, my uncle. And I went to New York like once or twice. And I just took a couple flicks of graph and I, I saw what it was supposed to look like. So I think that was like a competitive edge mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I saw. Like, for one thing, I noticed that the pieces in Miami were too small, you know? Mm hmm. And then just uh, I saw like you know they have more fill over there they have more background but bigger you know like bigger scale that's me next to one of my pieces maybe sixteen years old that was for uh, Mez who I believe passed away um, he was a writer he was a brother of another writer nice I mean well, I, I don't, the thing is like so much has happened that I, I I'm afraid that I'm that you know I make I could say the wrong thing. It's all good, man. I mean, that's what, that's what documenting our story is about. We try yeah. to figure it out and put the pieces together. So this was a show that we had in 86 at the library. Okay. And so they did a really nice job curating the show. They had like a case with like black books and little canvases and markers and stuff. And it was all kind of displayed almost like the way the museum is doing it nowadays. They have something quite like this. But I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing that they were doing this that the, the people in the library were visionary enough to do this in 86 that is awesome so who and i don't even remember how it exactly came about i think sar started talking to someone or someone started talking to us before you knew it we had to show and i couldn't believe it in fact the whole time i was doing canvases and stuff for it i was thinking in the back of my mind like you know they're gonna eventually paul's gonna call me paul sar he's gonna call me and he's gonna say like oh no yeah like the the whole thing is off. It's, it's not really going to happen. Even right. when it happened, I couldn't believe it happened. And here we got an ATKM. Um, ATKM jacket. Mm -hmm. Not sure who did that jacket. Okay. All the art. That's a, that's a very historic piece by Saar. And the reason why it's historic is because we made an, uh, you know, when he passed away in 2009, uh, I went up to New York and me and the guys from Eggheads got together at Ease's place in New York City. And we did He's made that exact same online by SAR on his rooftop. And we did a sort of like a memorial thing there, you know? Oh, dope. That's really Yeah, good. and it was on his rooftop. And we specifically said like, yo, you know, no Facebooking, no nothing. It was just for us. 
And who who now holds the the originals to these? Do you know? Um. Do you, what do you mean the originals to these? Oh, there's yeah, no like more originals. I, I have no idea where they are. Like I have stuff that I've gotten on the internet. You know, I have no originals. Wow. No black books either. A lot of my black books got stolen. That's a canvas I did in, uh, I guess, back for that show. To, uh, so it's 86. And, you know, like 20 years later, after 2001, what happened in New York City, I saw that this canvas was the Big Apple 2001. Wow. And I was like, wow, that's kind of trippy. But anyway, it was supposed to be apocalyptic, like, after, you see, like, Manhattan has turned into, like, a, you know, it's okay. kind of dark. It's fairly dark. I don't know what I was thinking, but. It's a wasteland. It's like, you know, definitely influenced by Star Wars. Yeah, it was influenced by Star Wars and influenced by Planet of the Apes. I think there was a scene in Planet of the Apes where I, I bit that imagery from. No doubt. No doubt. For those of you that just joined us, this is Heck One Love, Miami Graffiti Pioneer. And he's walking us through, teaching us about the old school. So here's Alive an Alive Five, five piece. Who was in Alive Five? And who? Alive Five was me, Sar, uh, Senek, Joker. And we had like a ro rotating spot for the fifth spot. And mm. uh, and me and Sar had talked about putting Ease there. I don't know if he ever got around to telling Ease. <laughs> Word. Alive Five in the building. So then Speaking you of Ease, that's actually the first collab I ever did with Ease. Um, and it's one of his first pieces because this was when he was 13 years old. Right. And so for those of you that don't know who Ease is, he's talking about Jose Parla, who is now a very well-established uh, artist. He did start in the streets of Miami as well. Jose Parla, correct. Um, so what's really interesting about this piece is that he had a crew called DOM, and he very sort of sheepishly as a, you know, reluctant kind of shy 13 year old approached this older 16 year old guy who was like, basically that was like my wall, that was on my playground. So he like, not only approached me and asked me for a spot, but he actually said, maybe we could do a collab. And he wow. said, you know, yeah, he's like, I'm DOM crew. Maybe we could do a DOM and, you know, MOB. And I'm like, oh, it's perfect. You know, we can share the M. And, uh, and I tried to almost give like the D and the O their own flavor you know, and the mob is a little bit thinner. Um, that was kind of subtle, but. And so you did the outline and then did you teach him how to fill in on this wall? It was, did he no, know? No, I wouldn't say, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go that far. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember that he was like reluctant to paint as much as me. You know, he was kind of like, again, no disrespect. The homie is a yeah. friend and he's very talented, but he, at the point you got to understand context. He's a 13 year old boy, you know, and he's right. starting out. So yeah, we painted together, but he was like, you know, he was kind of, uh, he's kind of following my lead. And also he's, I believe most of his paints were, were uh, Jess's paints. Yeah, I see so Jess got up on here as well. Yeah, right. yeah. If we, if we scroll, if we look up at the scroll here. Right. Yeah, Jess, I believe most of his paints were there, but I don't know that anything was actually painted by Jess. So again, the memory is, very spotty. This is 86. And at this time as a young person, how, how were cops being to young people, you know, doing graffiti? Did they know who you were? Was it on the down low? Hello? You there, Heck? Are you talking about cops? Because you kind of cut out there for a little bit. Yeah, cops. Like, as a young... Yeah, can 16th... you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. you can hear you me? hear me? Yes, I hear you. You hear me? Okay. Yeah, cops. Okay, okay. You know, so cops, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Go ahead. Okay, so basically, it's good that you're asking me about cops with this particular piece because this was Junior, who still writes Junior. Um, Ruba and he King. was 10 years old. Talk about being young. And he got, he got pinched this day. I helped him with this piece. And, uh, you know, I did the outline for him. And, I, you know, I, I did most of the piece for him, if I remember correctly. But... Um, but, uh, you know, the kid got arrested that day. And he was 10 years old. Wow. I, I never forgot that. And I'm sure his parents to this day still are mad he's from that day. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big up Junior, VIP crew, FA crew, AIM crew, and all that. Big up Roomba King. 
This was on a rooftop. On a rooftop on top of um. I think there was a, a a kids like a like a toy store called Play World back there, on like 87th and Coral Way. Okay. And that was on the rooftop of that shopping center. I climbed to the back. And I got up and I did that piece. That was uh, one of you know I used to like doing rooftop pieces. They were pretty safe. Was nobody it visible? Got up. Huh? Was it visible from the street? No, no, it was somewhat visible from the back of the of the. You remember like. When you have like a shopping strip and then the all the trucks and stuff go through the back. Right. You know, it was basically like that kind of like access to like delivery trucks and stuff. It's not really the front at all. Right, right. And and I see it says no static, just art. So was there a lot of beef going on at that time? Man, I'm telling you that the walls wouldn't last. Everything would get bombed. And I kept trying to put like all kinds of things like, yo, like don't respect. Like I, all my pieces is something like respect, no, you know, no tags, you know. People would just tag over it and just whatever. I don't know what it was. And now this here, just so you know, this was a this is a legendary piece for us because this is one of the pieces we would look at as young writers and study and be told about the legend, you know, the legendary heck and just the letters, the fades, the blends. So what can you tell us about how your style developed at this time? Well, I you know, I I, I looked up to Sar a lot. You know, he was in my unit. I was I was fortunate to be around Sar and Senek, and they were both very talented. But Sar was in a league of his own, and his letters always had this flavor, like they were just the perfect thickness and the perfect everything. Mm -hmm. And I was like feeling like, man, he my letters are good, but he just always goes that extra step, and he just had the he just knew how to f cut the letter the right way. And I would always think of like. You know, maybe I don't know how to do a cute letter, but I could do like sim symmetry and, and I could do like connections, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of developed more of a style of like trying to be symmetric and complex and like also and transparent as well. Like a lot of the connections were transparent and see through and stuff. And it kind of added a level of complexity for the time. Nowadays, it's like not a big deal, you know? So, yeah. But man. this how is like still in the 80s, you know? And how, how were you getting paint back in the days? How was I getting paint? Um, honestly, very little paint. You know, I would have to maybe buy some, rack some here and there. But really, I wasn't like a major, uh, I wasn't that brave when it came to that. So I would have to just get one here and there, like slowly but surely. That was a piece that I did for uh, C and Depp. They were in the mob crew as well. I apologize for uh, forgetting about that in a minute. It's all good. It's, it all comes, it comes back. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Sir Depp, you know, Sir Depp, he still gets up. He was in the mob crew. Mm -hmm. He still puts up stickers. Um, That's the mob crew. And uh, that was by the wall of, that was uh, by 92nd and Coral Way. There was a lot of pieces there. That it was a touch of class that I think was even before or after this piece on that same wall. And it's great. I mean, that white outline is really just making the letters look like they glow. Yeah, know? I was trying to do something new. And uh, or just something new for me. Um, if you go to the next slide, I think you can see the full. Yeah. And what's really cool about that is that character on the right ended up being on a cover of the Miami Graffiti book like 30 or 40 years later. Yeah, yeah. You know, that character there with the gun. On top. Who drew the character? That was me. Okay. That was like an improvised character, by the way. I didn't even have a sketch, and I had never done a character before that. Oh, wow. I said, you know, I'm going to do a character. And, like, if you really look up, if you really look into it, he almost has no face. Because I didn't really know what I was doing, so I just made a very, very simple face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and were you into art before graffiti, before style writing? Mm, not as much. Not as much, not in a way that I had noticed that like, okay, this is something that I'm, because graffiti was addictive. Like once I, I, I latched onto graffiti, I was pretty much hooked. So I don't remember anything before that. I'm sure I had some ability, but I had not really discovered it. Mm -hmm. So this is a whole canvas that I did for that show in 86 uh, on the, that was, I guess one of my names, I had a million names back in the day. I had Cher, mm -hmm. Chose, Sane, Style way early in the day I had style like back in like early eighties but you know I, I changed names like like changing a, a shirt but 
<laughs> eventually, you know, forecast, I had forecast for a very long time. And then heck, after heck, you know, just after you're heck and your name is heck, you pretty much have to stay with heck. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> and so did I, I saw also this was something that DK from FA crew saved. The yeah, archive. is that correct? See, like, I don't even like that's the thing is like if people like DK and people who like uploaded all these pictures to Miami Graffiti, that if they had not done that, I did not have any of my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Too much time had happened. I, I was very stupid about like trying to preserve or thinking long term or even taking pictures. You know, I didn't do any of that stuff. I love the blue 3D on the letters, it's great, man. It's just, Thank you. Yeah, very well. Very well done. So, so this is paint markers, design. This is Look paint markers. I would get really into like, just, you know, I would just sit there and try to make everything as perfect as I could. You know, I was very kind of, I'm still, I'm the same way. I get really into trying to make like my letters perfect, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another classic, Miami classic. So what can you tell us about this piece and where is it? This was in uh, South Beach, back when South Beach was grimy. This was at a, a club, Club New. I don't know if you remember Club New. Yep. It was at like Mid Beach around 15th, or I don't remember exactly where, but there was a lot of pieces in this club. Um, and I think Z called me out and said like, hey, why don't you do a piece? And anybody, any, any you know, for tons of time people would call me and I just always ask like, oh, you have paint? Oh, there's paint, I'm going, you know? And then I would get down with that crew or those people, whoever it was, just because of my, my own that so a lot of times you're like how did you get paint usually i had to collab a lot of times i collab to in order to get like full pieces done because all the other ones were like you that's why you see a lot of pieces that were like one or two letters around my house i just barely had like a couple two or three cans and i i couldn't really have the discipline to wait until i had 20 to do a piece i would just like you know mm -hmm. And TIA, who was in TIA crew at this time? Who invited you? I, to honestly, I couldn't tell you other than Z. I couldn't tell you. And, okay. and I could be wrong about Z. I just, you know, I honestly, like, I my recollection is Z called me and he was in TIA. Other than that, I don't know anything else. You know? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, classic feelings. Yeah, those are pretty, uh, those are pretty, like, my, my feelings back then were, I mean, I guess, I've always been a minimalist, you know, mm -hmm. but um, who, who was the first to start doing this like swirly style filling? Where did that come from? To the mm -hmm. best of your knowledge. There was like this, I think maybe ATA. Mm -hmm. Not like this, though. This is I don't know what I was thinking here, because this is kind of like just random, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, they did like this new wave, this kind of new wave, almost like curves. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. a thing that you saw a lot, but I don't know exactly this where I got it from. Okay. You know, it, again, it's probably all dictated by very few cans. Right. Very right. few right. options. Like you see this minimalist pick. You know, if I would have had enough cans, I would have had many, many more pieces and the pieces would have probably been different, a lot more complex, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like this one almost has no fill because, you know, I maybe, I maybe just had just enough colors to do that, you know? And what did your family think of you being involved? Oh, we're about to get into the new stuff. What did your family think about you getting, in, you know, getting involved in graffiti art? Or did they not know? Well, no, they knew. I got in trouble fairly early on. I mean, one time I was, um, one time I was tagging, like it was at two in the morning and I was tagging the, the, the library, you know, it was by my house. And I got busted. A cop took me to my door. It was like two in the morning. My parents, like, they thought I was sleeping in bed. And it was a whole scene. You know, my mom was like so upset. Everything was like, and then I was like, really, like, I felt ashamed. And, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I retired, my mini retirement for a while, you know, and then I started again. But, mm -hmm. you know. So this is actually not that new because this was actually what I was doing at the same time. This piece is very old. I did this in high school. Oh, okay. And this is uh, and this is this is like watercolor, and ink, and I did that in in like um. In high school, while you know maybe like eighty nine, while I was doing some of my last pieces. So you're starting to test the grounds as an artist, going stepping outside of the graffiti world a little bit. Right, right. I mean, it was like a very. It, I, I wouldn't even say it was that serious. I was never thinking myself as an artist in high school, 
Mm-hmm. I was just like a kid, you know, having fun, like, oh, whatever, graffiti writing, that's cool. But in art class, I was like, oh, okay, you want me to do this? I'm like, oh, you want me to do something creative? I'm like, I'll show you what I can do. And I, and I would just do that. But I wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm moving in this direction or anything like that. At that age, I wasn't that self-aware. And, and what, what high school did you go to? What writers were, were there at that time? Well, DK went to my high school. I went to Sunset. Oh, okay, Sunset. And, uh, but this was actually uh, by Braddock High School. This was like yeah. right behind Braddock. Before Braddock uh, existed. Yeah, this was while Braddock was being built, actually. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For those of you that don't know, Braddock is somewhere like, was it Miller? 147, it's 147th Avenue and Bird Road, which and is Bird. Street. Got you. And it has been a staple for hip hop culture ever since it opened its doors. So many, so many writers, MCs, DJs went through that school. So basically the one before this one and this one, there's some of my very last pieces back in the, I would say, 89. Mm-hmm. you know when I retired back then but you could see like I think like you could see the maturity and you see my connections getting like tighter yeah you know yeah yeah it was, what was AKA that's another one that I barely remember because I think I was in it for a while but I don't remember I don't remember no doubt but no this sorry. was Braddock Wall and I started getting down in the Braddock Wall I did a few walls I was almost like coming out of retirement like I had almost kind of retired, but then I came back and I'm like, no, 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 I want to do more pieces. And I did a few at that wall and then that was it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was like 2007. You know, I hadn't painted for a long time, you know, and I was like, let me try to do something. And I did that on the door with like spray and markers. Nice. That was... um. I would say around 2010, I I started hanging out with writers again. Like the internet brought me back from like the, you know, oblivion. And I started connecting with writers uh, around 2010 and uh, started like doing some pieces again. What was that like? I mean, come you're, you're now, you know, someone who painted in the early and mid eighties and now you're stepping back up on the scene, painting walls again as a grown man. Well, what's really interesting, and I tell you, this was a, one of these experiences that I'll never be able to fully put, you know, explain to someone, but I found myself on the internet, which mm-hmm. is like the weirdest thing, because I was like, what is this? And they were like, like blogs and people talking about like, oh, I remember one time Heck was doing this. And I was like, what is this? And they were saying like stuff that really happened. I'm like, oh my God, these people really were there. And it was wow. so interesting to find that these people had like, save pictures i started finding my pictures i had i told you i had, didn't have anything and mm-hmm. i started finding all my old stuff and i started finding like blogs about graffiti and about miami graffiti and they were talking about you know i first started talking about mentioning like old school people and other people that i knew and then eventually i, I started seeing myself in the conversation and i was like this is insane you know like this is so long ago and people still about it you know mm-hmm. and so i started reconnecting and then like this is one of my comeback pieces in 2010. And this was done uh, in a car wash by 7th Avenue, like behind a car wash, very like unassuming spot that nobody would ever know. I got down with the ink crew and um, Don, who's a VO5 at the time. Mm-hmm. And so this wall was like, so again, I was trying to do something different. So I did the, the TNT as a part of the stick of the H. I mean, and look at those fillings right there. This, Phil, there was a lot of things like, so this is an interesting story. There was a car wash on the other side of this. So what they would do is like they would clean out the cars and there would be all these little toys and all these la- random little things. And they would just throw them out back there, like little shiny little half toy things. And what I started doing is I started finding those things and I started gluing them on the piece, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I was just having fun. And I ended up gluing, I don't know if this piece or this picture was at that level, but I started gluing all these reflector stuff and all this weird stuff on the piece, you know? That's dope. And here's, here's the piece in its fullness. So you yeah. Have... So you see uh, Pro. Right. Next to me, you have Pro, then Devious. Then I think at the front, that's like a little front wall. That was VO5. a VO5 there by Don. And then over there, we have uh, Javesky. Another Miami pioneer. For so sure. if you go, like, look at this, the, 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 the whole planetary background, I, I had a lot of fun with that, and I did that with Don. So who's con- who, who got the wall and whose idea was it to go ahead and rock, you know, pull out AIM, VO5, 
Mom well, that, you know, Seal, Seal was always plotting, you know. So he, he heard that I was back. He got my phone number. He started calling me back. He's like, yo, hey, you got to start painting. And, like, he just knew that I had the bug in me. He's like, you got to start painting, man. And so we got a wall done. And then I was already, like, by the time we did this wall, I was already hooked. I was already back, you know. Yeah, man. Big up CO AIM crew, always putting, getting people together to rock. For those of you that are just joining us, you are live on Art Talk with Heck One Love and a Miami pioneer. I am Brimstone. If you could show your support so we can continue to tell these stories by purchasing a badge, it's greatly appreciated. And we're going to keep telling the story, man. And, and no one could do it better than Heck because he was there. So let's go. So now we're moving into more of your current work. How, how did you decide, OK, I'm going to break out of letters. I'm going to break out of traditional graffiti and just go another route. What was that transition like? Well, I don't know. If you look at it, I mean, if you look at it, you see the graph culture in it. You see, right. you see tags. And that was the homies coming through. Like, the Don came through. Devious came through. Metaphor came through. Uh, a lot of people came through. And I was like, hey, you know, come here and like, hand, do a hand style. And I just started blending it all in. And just, you know, just kind of baking it all in the, and I was just like, you know, I'm going to try to make an abstract piece that's almost like graph, but it's not like it doesn't have to have an outline. It's just like a fill, but just trying to just think completely outside of the box, you know? Mm -hmm. No doubt. No doubt. And so is this commissioned work? How did, like, how did you, how did you transition from illegal graffiti to that style of work? Um... Man, I, I guess I did, like, I started doing the loveism walls and somebody saw one and i i think that was actually a block away from the very first loveism so that's probably what got got it going you know i did my well, first what, loveism inside winwood and then that was in an alley in uh, 2011 and after that you know i did the one with trek which we'll get to i'm sure yeah what exactly is loveism well loveism uh is a lot of things but you know, I'm pretty mysterious about it because I think it's more interesting for people to to sort of like imagine what it could be rather than have me have it like completely chewed up and digested for them. I'd rather, I'd rather people have, I think it's always more interesting to think than to know. So, you know, I don't even know exactly what it is. You know, I, I want I want to inspire people to to try to find out what it is and what it could be for them, you know? You know, I know... For me, it's basically living your best self. Like, okay, so there's a there's a space between potential, like the there's a space between intention and what you actually do at the end of the day. So you wake up and you say, I'm gonna be a good person today, right? But then at the end of the day, there were times where you fell short, right? So lovism mm -hmm. is that gap. It's really working on that gap. Mm -hmm. okay. But anyway, um, this is a piece that I did in Little Haiti around 2010 with, uh, with the guys from AIM. Again, Seal was like putting me together with like, um, you know. Um, Mac? Max, yeah, Mac and Don. And, and we were like rocking pieces in Little Haiti. Nice. You know, devious. Mm -hmm. So these pieces actually, I, I was trying to do again a new style. You see me trying to come up with something that I haven't done before. So I was like, I want to do something like really almost repulsive. That's why I did the pimples on it. And if you see one of the zits is like popping. And actually I was going to come back the next day because to me it didn't, it was like almost like too pretty and I wanted to make it gross. So I was going to add like hairs, like black thick hairs on it. <laughs> I was actually, yeah, I was actually uh, um, inspired by like the Ren and Stimpy close-ups that they would do with these like gross hairs and stuff. So mm -hmm. I wanted to do that. But then... The day that I did that, that same night, a vigilante went over the whole wall. So I didn't even get a chance to go back to it. So thank God we actually got this picture because I didn't take a picture again. You know, true to form, I forgot to take a picture. Somebody else's picture had to, had to be saved. Right. And this is my last piece that I did in uh, 2011. You know. The brand, so you, the brand is the message. What are you, what are you, what are you conveying to the people with that? Well, I was already thinking in terms of uh, of uh, loveism, you know. Mm -hmm. I had already the the loveism thing was already in my head, and I was already thinking that that was gonna be my thing. But I just couldn't wait, and I did it with 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 heck, you know, because it works with anything. Like, you know, heck is the message. You know, it's it's me. You know, 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what graffiti writing is all about, is yeah. the message, right? Getting your name in as many places as possible. That was actually the very first loveism. So um, it's a little bit out of, uh, it's a little bit out of whatever, but that was the very, very first loveism. That was the birth of the loveism movement. And is this majority, is it buff paint? How long does it take for you to cover a wall of this magnitude? Uh, we did it in about 10, 15 days. Mm -hmm. This was a lot of fun. We were really happy to be working on this. Uh, the homie Dot helped me. Uh, you know, he, uh, you know, somewhere in there is his throwy. You could probably see it by the E. It's hard to see, but, you know, I, we tried to uh, do, like, he was helping me do the loveism, but I tried to also let him do a little bit of his, like, throwy and a little bit of, like, hand styles, you know, mm -hmm. in the piece. Speaking of that, that's him right next to that, in that white circle, that's him. But anyway, um, that's the first time I did, like, a full abstract with no lobism or no letters or no anything. I just did like a, like an abstract. And I was, in, I was inspired by Futura's, uh, by Futura's train that he did in, uh, in 1980, mm -hmm. you know? And okay, so here, this is probably one of the most photo, aside from the boom box, I would mm -hmm. say probably the second most photographed uh, piece in all of when really all of South Florida. Yeah, it was also probably had the longest longevity. Mm -hmm. It was around for 11 years. 11 years in Wynwood is like a lifetime, you know, several yeah. lifetimes. And and we have different variations of it. So which one was first? Well, like, look at this. Look at this. And this is what people don't remember is what this piece looked like at the beginning, how bright it was. And the right. fact that the letters weren't even filled in, they were like, like a halo. They were like outlined, but mm -hmm. it was mostly background. And really, this piece, when it was done, at the beginning, it was so shiny and like the colors were amazing, but of course the the sun always takes that back. Right, and but I just wanted up, to include that so people would remember what it was like because it was a lot more colorful than it was. And big up, movie. big up, Trek Six for this collaboration. Yeah, Trek Six killed it. STV um, in the building. Yeah. So you're taking us to the interior of a place, no? Yeah, this is uh this is like a spa. This is like a yoga place that I commissioned me to do. And, uh, you know, I just started, like, every time I do a piece, I try to take into account, like, the space, the context, the lighting. And so a lot of my pieces, you see that I go in different directions and different styles, and it's because I try to respond to, you know, what's what the environment or what the wall or what the design element is calling for. I try to take that cue and run with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in this case, that was the chandelier was actually a big inspiration for like what colors to use, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it, right? The reds popping off and the red. Yeah, because they had like a sort of like a luxurious vibe and I just wanted to make it really lush. And I was thinking like pinks and purples and stuff, but then I said like, that's too limited. Let's put the full range, so. And, and so what do you think of like the graffiti art movement and how it's changed now into street art and murals and it's kind of left its, ven you know, it's vandal you know, headquarters in a sense for all many, not for everyone, but for me. No, for definitely not for everyone. You know, it's it's actually interesting because it's giving a lot of like um, villages, right? There's the writers that are like straight up writers and they just really uh, almost like hostile to street art, right? And then there's the guys that are in the middle. There's the guys that are just like freight, freight of files. They just do freights. The guys that only do stickers. And back then it wasn't like that. So, you know, it's really grown to the point where you really could grab a niche and just run with it, you know? And so right. I, I don't I don't have a problem with it. You know, I just wish I just wish the writers would not just automatically feel entitled to go over street artists, right? Mm -hmm. Now some street artists, I'll be the first one to admit, they're clowns, they're posers. Maybe some people deserve to get gone over over, over some more, but don't just have this attitude of like, you know, we're writers, so we just go over street art as a as a as a matter of principle. That's whack. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh so that lobbyism before was in dubai oh so what was it like going that, to dubai and, and you know i had a solo show in dubai in 2014 and that was the, that was the gallery facade you know they had me asked me to paint it even though it looks like a signage that's actually all hand painted there nice nice what was it like being in dubai and rocking your work it was uh it was interesting man it had its ups and downs you know i don't want to get into a whole like thing but 
Dubai is not a lot of what people think it is, and it's 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 a really good in a lot of ways, but it's just it's an interesting place. Mm -hmm. So over here, I had to put like one of my favorite uh, days. You know, this is the day that I was having my opening, and then I went over to um, the hotel, and 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 um, uh, Future was there because we were doing a whole thing, like a, there was like a whole world record thing being done, and there was a bunch a bunch of writers there in. Uh, in Dubai at the time. So I was fortunate to have like a whole bus of like the best writers in the world come to visit my show, right? Just because mm -hmm. they were all like in a hotel in Dubai and they were like, oh, let's go check out that show. And they had like a, a tour bus. So they ended up and I'm also on like Odith is on my show. All these people that I, you know, all these famous writers from all over the world, they're on my show. And I'm like, okay, this is awesome. And then I walk into Futura later and he comes up to me. He says, hey, heck, congrats on your show. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe. First mm -hmm. of all, Futura remembers my name. He knows I have a show, like I'm meeting him in Dubai is super, it was like, you can see how happy I am. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's, it's for us, that, that's legendary names as we were reading those names in, in 1984 in Subway Art books, right? Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. definitely, and remembering those styles. And that guy is amazing, dude. That guy, I saw him sign like 50, 50 autographs at least. Remember, all the writers there, they all adore him. And he was mm -hmm. very patient with all of us. Like, I mean, there was always a line of people waiting to talk to him for him to sign stuff. He was so mm -hmm. gracious and generous. I can never say enough. Word, word. So this is another one of those loveisms. That was um, this is the first time I did. I ch I changed up the stripes. You know, I went from like um, those drips to more of a stripes. But if you look at the piece, it actually has some big drips in there too, like like fake drips. You know. Right, right, right. I see that definitely. That's a painting. Just want to include some some original just paintings. And so, is your work currently sh showing galleries right now? You know, I don't really, I don't really pursue galleries. You know, I don't go out of my way to do gallery work. Uh, some amazing gallery called me up and said, "Oh man, you want to do a solo show?" Of course, I would. I'm not an idiot, but I don't go out of my way looking for galleries or trying to pitch galleries. So every once in a while. You know, I might like sneak into a, a group show or something, but it's not something that I really pursue. And and also, so this is one, I mean, the first bus I ever saw was Crave. They had Crave do this years ago. And then yeah. I saw this rolling down the street one day. So tell us a little bit how this process was, you know. Um, and, well, and this was is a like contest. This was a contest. And, uh, you know, it was like basically like they only had five, five number one prices and like nobody, there was no other thing. So it's like you entered. And if you get one of the slots, then your bus, your design gets made into a bus. And I won. And along with the five other people, Crave was one of them. And Nate D was also one of them. Nice. You know. Nice. And so what, how would it feel like to see your bus running down the street? I always get a rush. It's like a little high. Sometimes I chase it or, or like I try to record it, you know. If, I, if it's in a situation where I see that it's going to turn around or something, I'll just like, you know, I'll actually... Uh, parked, pulled over really fast and just had it like come right in front of me and I was able to record it and stuff. So it's always fun. It's, and I've seen it a bunch of times, you know. In fact, I've had a lot of people think that it's multiple buses, but it's just one. Oh, because they're all over. I got you yeah. see it all over the place. Yeah, I've seen so it what, way, way too many times. And so what is the approach for a piece like this? Like from start to finish, can you walk us through your process? This right here, this was a collaboration I did with United Way, and this was at a school, a middle school in uh, here, North Miami Beach mi Middle. And they wanted to do something where a lot of volunteers could come in and fill. And so I came up with a design that would be pretty complex, but at the same time, I did like a numbering system, and I, and I came up with this system where everybody sort of had like a team, and they were like a color, and they knew what they were doing. So I, I worked on it for like a week or two. I don't even remember. And then everybody came in, all the volunteers uh, from a law firm in Brickell, and they all like filled in all this stuff like with me on a Saturday. Dope. And then I had to come back and finish it, you know? Dope, dope, dope. This is another commission inside like a, like a stairway of a, of a shopping center. Mm -hmm. And so and are the you, bottom, huh? do you paint full time? Um... I I do I do like I, I'm a I'm, no no I don't yeah. I, I don't pay full time but I I'm an artist full time you know got you got okay got you so what other kind of art skills do you use well the thing is like you know the 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 thing the furthest apart from from being an artist that I do is I sometimes I do like VIP tours in Wynwood but to me that's like related. 
to the mm -hmm. art. So I might do that, but I also might do like art experiences. I might do commissions. I might do paintings. I might do walls indoor and out. You know, I might do a commission for a corporate office or, or just anything or like a pool. Um, all kinds of things. So like this, so this, is, a, this is an there, office. And so there's definitely enough work out there for working artists, right? Yeah, this is a, like a shared office space, you know, mm -hmm. in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. And I did seven of these panels. This is just one of them. This is a building where the actual, the whole paint, like the whole gimmick of the building is that it didn't have any paint. The whole finish of the building was like, that sort of raw concrete and uh and so basically i wanted to add like all the splash and all the color in these panels you know because it wasn't on the walls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is a collaboration with the marlins that we did in brickle again you see the sort of like their drips coming back as an element but these times are super massive and just like you know like two or three feet wide wow this is when they released their whole new brand you know and so they restrict, uh, they restricted me to their new brand palette. But I, you know, it's, it was restricted. It's definitely the least amount of paint, the, the the least sort of the most restrained palette I've ever worked with. But I think it works. So this was a collab with Brujo, and uh, it was put together by Mural Fest, Winwood Mural Fest, mm -hmm. uh, last year during the pandemic. So it was called Wish You Were Here. And we asked for submissions from all over the world. People sent in stuff, you know, um, we paste and stickers and slaps and all kinds of stuff. And we put it all together. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's it's a pretty effective collaboration. You know, there's a lot of millions of little details in there that's maybe not appreciated. But a lot of people were able to see this because it was on Second Avenue. So what what is actually inside of the letters? So inside of the letters is Brujo, which is uh, his thing that he does, which is a face, you know. Mm -hmm. I know what the face means. I don't know if I'm supposed to say it in public, so I'm going to let him talk No about problem. It. No problem. <laughs> so this is another example of, you know, just me going with what the, what the universe brings me. So over here, the universe gave me a round window. So for me, I was not going to, like, let that go. Mm -hmm. So you can see how I just turned that into the O and, um, and just kind of worked the whole design around that window. Mm. And because the tree was in front and because of the certain things, I just went with a very minimalist, very minimalist palette. And have you ever branched off into like brand, you know, clothing and things of that nature with this brand? Sure. I, I mean, I have my own, I have some merch. I have like, I'm launching my own, um, my own like, you know, w website now, uh, loveismofficial.com. But we're just getting started there. And there. We're going to be having a lot more stuff going on there. And you know, to, you know, this week is coming into the next week. You know, it's 2021. It's Art Basel. It's it's Miami Art Week. What are you doing during this time? Well, I'm doing two walls. One on 26th Street. The other one is right in the middle of everything on Second Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, the DJI store, and I'm gonna be doing a very very big wall uh, in downtown Miami, which will be the best, uh, the biggest wall I've done by far. And so, you know. Look forward to that because that's going to be a big one. What's the size of that wall? It's like a six-story building, and it's just like a whole, the whole width of the building. It's basically like a, the width of a block, and it's right next to the uh, the people mover. So it, it'll be a it'll be a pretty pretty staple fit, um, pretty staple piece. No doubt. Big up on um, the original DJ Magic is in the building. One of Miami's first b-boy DJs. Big up, big up. So you see, like commissions. That's like for a poolside. You know, um, you know, I've, I've I've had to sort of be flexible as an artist to make a living, but you can see that I don't really compromise too much. Like I sort of do my thing, like variations on my thing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I do my thing. When people hire me, they don't really say expect me to do like a portrait, not because mm -hmm. I don't know how to, but just because I don't do that kind of work. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's still so it's very graffiti representative. I mean, it's nothing but drips and drips and drips, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to me, it's just exploration. All of my work, if you really narrow it down to it, it's an exploration. It's all of it, really, all of it. You could look at all the different variations of it, and it's all an exploration of motion and color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Again, another the motion and the color, right? Yeah, this is, a, this is another commission inside an engineering office up in West Palm Beach. This was a million-dollar uh, built-out. These people really did an amazing job with, like, 
the whole interior office super high and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really come in there and do something very tasteful that wasn't going to, you know, it's just a very sort of like a classy place, but it came out really, I mean, this is just a detail of the whole wall. I mean, I had like so many pictures that I, I didn't know what to show, but. No, it's all good. Just a... That's another painting. That's a rather large painting. It's, I think it's like eight by eight feet. Mm. Where is it hanging now? That's in the same space in West Palm Beach. Okay. Same. Uh, I did like, I ended up doing like five paintings for them and a wall. And for that people that for, for people that want to transition, even even maybe they've been doing just straight up graffiti and legal art for the past thirty years, and they're like, man, I want to start making a little bit of money and you know paying some bills with this talent I have. What advice can you give to them? How do you I mean, get started? Uh, the, you know, I'm not a I'm not a maybe the best person to say you know to say how you can make a lot of money with art. There's certainly people who are doing way way better than me, mm -hmm. but. You just have to sort of be true to your vision. And the more selfish you are, not selfish, but self-indulgent creatively, the more that you're doing you, the more that people will know what you look like. You know, if you're trying to be a chameleon and please everyone, how is the world supposed to find out what your work really looks like? You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No doubt. And so you, you deal with textures, layers. What else can you tell us that you find is unique to your, you know, your particular style and approach to painting? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's very um, sort of explorational and experimental. And, and when I started painting, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, it's very different than, than somebody that sets out to do, you know, a face or they have a plan or I'm going to do like a face with a thing and like this and I'm going to do like a I don't know what I'm doing I start and I just go with like oh I want I, I feel like I want to do more black here and I'm like oh, okay I'm and and like maybe I have like 25 or 30 percent of the painting in my head when I start and I and it's not even a painting it's just like color like a color palette you know mm -hmm. and I just feel like oh I want it to be strong in orange and I want it to be more like dominant in orange than pink but and I just have like a, that much in my head but I don't really know what I'm doing other than that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you say like you sp every day you catch a tag somewhere on a notebook, yeah, you know, envisioning and you know, I know a fake one on a wall, just envisioning your name? Are you still like that? I still do writer? that. I still, I'll still do that. Actually, you know, I'm notorious for like, I can't resist. You know, when you go to like a restaurant and it has the, and it has like the condensation on the on the glass. Yeah. You know? Or even a fast food store or whatever, like any like Seven Eleven or whatever. Like I see those things in the glass and I just start tagging it, you know. Even at the grocery store in the freezers, you know, I tag those uh, those condensation plates, you know. And and I still catch tags occasionally, you know. Usually do forecast because that's like that's like my bombing tag, you know. But I I just do that for fun. And that's really not not my main, you know. It's not my main thing. And what's in, what could you say is in the future for, for your movement, for Heck One, for Loveism, for Forecast? Well, um, Forecast is like, Forecast is where I come from, you know? And Forecast, you can still see Forecast tags in my painting, and it's almost become like a, like a creative, you know, thing that I do. Uh, but Heck will always be here, and Loveism, hopefully, is what happens after I'm not here, you know? Mm -hmm. I hopefully, you know, would love to be able to say that um, my life was the, the catalyst for creating a movement that I was actually outlived me. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. If not, I'm still just going to do my thing and I'm still having fun. And I feel like, you know, if I die doing this love with some walls, I, I die happy. You know, this is like what I want to do. You know, if you gave me a um, hundred million dollars, I'll be like, thank you. I'm going to use this money and, I'm, and I love it. I love the money. I'm going to buy a lot of stuff with it. But I'm not going to stop doing Love is a Wolf, you know? No doubt. Yo, party people in a place to be, man. Thank you so much for joining us. We got the original Heck One Love, MOB crew, Miami Pioneer. Thank you so much for supporting. If you haven't been down to the Museum of Graffiti, make sure you come and check us out. Please purchase a badge before we get out of here. Uh, it really helps us continue to tell the story. And Heck, do you have any final words for us and, and your people out there? Uh, enjoy Basel, guys. Be safe. Um... Love is some official on Instagram. Just follow the movement. Join along. 
no doubt. So, yo, we out of here. Y'all be safe. Peace and blessings, y'all. One love. Thank you, brother. Peace. Peace.